If you're a person of color and you've always looked at pastel makeup and said, oh, pastel, no. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Then you've come to the right place. Today, I'm going to try to change your mind and show you that pastels can look bomb on brown skin. I'm sitting up here trying to decide if I should start this video with a, what's up, everybody, or with a, hi, friend. It is your girl T, a.k.a. the nappy-headed jojoba. Not nappy, not jojoba, the nappy-headed jojoba. You have to say the whole thing. Which is why most people just call me T. And today I am here with a collaboration video. Today I am teaming up with six other wonderful, talented, creative, and gorgeous women of color who are fellow YouTubers. You guys know that I have mentioned Kelsey Brianna J many times before because she knows how to Kelsey Brianna slay. She invited me to do this collaboration where we are both Busting brown girl beauty myths. I was so flattered when she reached out to me to include me in this collaboration, but let's talk about who else is involved. Each one of us is tackling a brown girl beauty myth, i.e. something that is generally told to women or people of color in general that is like, well, you can't wear that because that doesn't work on brown skin. That doesn't work on dark skin. And the seven of us are teaming up to say, you must not know about me. You must not know about me. Today, we're showing you guys how to take these various beauty trends that we've been told will not work for us, how to lay it down, flip it and reverse it and actually make it look bomb. KBJ, our collabo captain, is taking on bronzers and blush for people of color. Chelsea, AKA Glam Girl Chelsea, is gonna show us how to make bold eyes and bold lips work for people of color at the same damn time. You don't have to pick. Jordine of This Is Black Beauty is showing us the best nude lip combos for brown skin because let's face it, a lot of these nudes out here will have us looking like we're just wearing a white woman's concealer on our mouths. Mo of Mo Makeup Mo Beauty is breaking down luxury foundations for people of color. Tina, the fancy face, OOG YouTuber, one of the first people I ever remember subscribing to. She's showing us how to slay neon eyes and lips on brown skin. And rumor is she did multiple looks in her video, so y'all better watch out. And last but not least, we have my dear friend Alicia, AKA Kinky Sweat, and she's breaking down sunscreens for people of color because it is a myth that we don't need it, y'all. Put on your sunscreen. As far as what I'm debunking, uh, y'all already know because videos have titles. Y you seen it. That's right, today we are getting into pastels for people of color. I know that pastels can be really intimidating, really daunting for those of us who are blessed with such an abundance of melanin. Sometimes you just look at some pastel eyeshadow and you're like, that is chalk that was pressed into an eyeshadow pan. But the first thing that we have to do as people of color is rethink pastels. If it looks dusty busty in the pan, it's gonna look dusty busty on your face. So the first thing we need to do is rethink the way that we actually conceptualize pastels for our skin tones. We're looking for pastels that are much more densely pigmented and generally just a step or two deeper than what are generally considered pastels for people who are much more lightly complected, shall we say. This is my spectral palette from Linda Halberg or Linda Halberg as we say here in America. And as you can see, it's got some pastel tones in here, but they're pretty rich looking. They're getting slightly washed out by the light from my window, but for the most part, they're much deeper than what you might see in a lot of the pastel palettes that are typically on the market. And this is the Sugar Pill Fun Size Palette. I adore this little palette. The shades in here are much more rich than the typical pastels that we see around. And I feel like this is the pastel palette for melanated people. I doubt that that's what Sugar Pill had in mind when they were creating it, but the tones in here are absolutely perfect for those of us who have brown skin, who have deeper skin tones, but they're actually really buildable. And some of them are quite pigmented off the bat and allow you to get that pastel effect without looking ghostly like you just put sunscreen on your eyelids. As you can see, I'm wearing two different eye looks right now. I did one look on this eye with this palette and then this look on this eye with this palette. So you'll get to see both of them in action. So once we've reimagined what pastels really ought to look like for those of us with brown skin and deeper skin tones, the next thing we need to do is to think about an eyeshadow base. When it comes to actually selecting your eyeshadow base, you have two options. Use a white or off-white or otherwise very light colored base to get the color to pop or option two, uh, manage your expectations. Obviously a white base will lighten your own skin tone to a pretty good degree and that will help those colors to really pop and look as saturated and really bring out their maximum potential. I will confess though, I rarely, perhaps even never do this. I don't think I've ever even bothered using a white base 
for my pastel looks. I'm kind of more on the manage my expectations team because I'm fine with building up my pigment and or just doing a more sheer look. You will see in today's demo though, I did use a light colored base just so you guys could see that you can really stretch the potential of those shades when you do so. My third tip has to do with the actual application of these tones because as you may have noticed, pretty much all of the pastels that I've shown you guys today are mattes. This entire palette is matte and then the shades that I pointed out in the spectral palette are all mattes as well. When dealing with matte pastel shades or really any colorful matte, what I like to do when I'm laying down that color to create my shape and blend out my crease area is I basically dab the color along where I want to create my shape, you know, as I sketch out my shape kind of just stabbing my brush in and then blend. What that does is it allows me to transfer the actual eyeshadow from my brush to my eyelid in a more even way than if I just went in and started blending immediately because what that will do is that will lay down a bunch of color where you first touch that brush down and then you're just trying to drag it across so that you don't have a blob of color here and then hardly any pigment out here. If you kind of stipple on that color and then blend it, you can lay it down more evenly and then just soften to diffuse everything. I don't only do this with pastels, I do this with any colorful shade that I'm putting in my crease or just any really densely pigmented color or if I'm just trying to build up a color in a certain place. Perhaps the color is quite sheer and I need to build it up. I dab, 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 pat, pat, pat and then blend. It works like charm. Now, if you're actually still intimidated by just using pastels, there's a few different ways you can do it. You don't have to go full bozo beat like I'm wearing right now. You can take the pastel and only use it as a transition shade, which I've done in a recent Get Ready With Me. Admittedly, I didn't use a lid shade because that's just me being kooky. Kooky is as kooky does. Definitely a bit more unconventional to just lay down pastels in your crease and call it a day, but you can do that with a more textbook standard uh, classic eyeshadow look as well. And I'll drop in some clips just so you can see how that looks, even though I didn't actually have eyeshadows on my lid as well. You can see it just adds a nice little splash of color, a bit of interest to your eye area. Another great way to use pastels if you're still intimidated is to use them as an inner corner pop right on that tear duct area. And or, great place, lower lash line. The inner tear duct and the lower lash line are both great places to just sneak in a bit of color if you're still very color phobic, especially pastel phobic. It allows you to just spice up an otherwise neutral look and just dip your toe into the pastels pool. Furthermore, because you're not having to worry about blending those pastels over a large area, if you have a particularly chalky, dusty, patchy formula, it's only going to be on a small area like your tear duct or your lower lash line or both if you go for that. So it's much easier, it's much more forgiving that way because you're not trying to do a whole ass look with these patchy, questionable shadows. Another reason it's important to pick good formulations and densely pigmented pastels if you're gonna go for them. Here's a look that I did recently where I have some lilac purple on my inner corner as well as on my outer V kind of crease area. And then on the lid for this look, I have a gold and silver glitter. It's actually a liquid eyeshadow. And that's just another way to, again, add in a dash of pastels if you're not yet ready to go whole hog. In the event you are maybe ready to try going fully on the lid and do your whole lid with a pastel color, don't fret about the lip. If you're still a little uncomfortable, just stick with something nude or neutral in the meantime. Kind of like what I have on right now. I think a neutral or nude lip looks great with a pastel eye because it really allows the eyes to be the focus. Then again, as you guys just saw in the look I showed with the lavender on my inner and outer corners along with the glitter lid, I went for a matching purple lip because I really do kind of enjoy monochromatic looks and I feel like they can be really strong, really editorial. It's just not for everyone. Pastel eyes and a bold lip can look dope as does a pastel eye and just clear gloss. There really is no better way to do it than another. It's whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever makes you feel happy. Before we jump in this demo, I just want to make it clear because I'm realizing now that I haven't said this and I always like to make this abundantly clear, I ain't no damn guru. I'm not a makeup artist. I've never worked at a matte counter, none of that. I'm just some lady who has entirely too much makeup because I love it. So this is not a tutorial. This is just me trying to share some tips and techniques that I've figured out on my own or picked up over the years. And by no means am I telling you what to do, I'm telling you what I do. So hopefully you enjoy these demos and find them helpful. Let's go ahead and talk to T from the not so distant past and see how we got here. 
Thanks, Future T. As Future T already discussed, you do have a choice of what kind of base you want to use. You can use your regular eyeshadow primer, but you will get the colors to pop more if you use a white or very light base. An alternative to a white base would be a pastel colored base. I think ColourPop has some pastel eyeliner pencils that you could use and blend out. And I think they even have some pastel colors that come in pots. I'm sure some other brands do as well. I have neither of those, but if I did, they'd be pretty handy for this video that is definitely not a tutorial. I happen to have a sample of the ABH eye primer. I think I got this for free with a Beautylish order or something. So that is what I have on my eyelids. And as you can see, the rest of my base is already done because this isn't a base video. Since my primer is already laid down, we can get busy. I'm going to first go in actually with my bronzer. And I love to use bronzer as my transition shade. One, because it tends to be less pigmented than an eyeshadow because it is a bronzer. And two, if I happen to be using that same bronzer to actually bronze my complexion that day, it's a nice harmonious effect. So just on your run of the mill blender brush, this is a Sigma E40. I'm going to basically sketch out my eye shape first. And as you can see, I've chosen a rather light bronzer. This one is by Hourglass. The shade is Luminous Light. And I went for, I believe they're mid-tone shade. I think they have one lighter than this and then one darker. But I went for this one because I don't want the bronzer to overwhelm what we're actually doing with these shadows in a moment. I want the shadows to be the star, the focus. And I'm really just doing this to make it easier for me to blend out the edges of those eyeshadows after I lay them down. Because these are pastels and they're mattes, it can be a bit tricky sometimes to get that seamless, no harsh lines edge, unless of course you're going for that look. So this is almost like an invisible fence to help me get that nice blend going once I actually go in with my color. Okay, transition shade, if you will, laid down. And I will do this even on what are technically one shadow looks. If I do just lavender or a baby pink all over my eyes, I still have that bronzer in there just to help transition it without it actually looking like I have a whole ash transition shade down and it just helps with the blending. One more prep step that I'm going to do before I actually go in with my color and that is tight line. I like to do this before my shadow because I find that because I have watery eyes, it reduces the likelihood that I'll be able to disturb my overall eye look if my eyes start watering from the tight lining process. And I'm gonna cut this out because tight lining always looks pretty gruesome. Tight lining is by no means necessary, but I think that it's really helpful in just helping to ground the look. Even though pastels are all about being light and springy and summery, having that depth at the lash line is really, really helpful to, again, just ground the look, make it look a bit less peculiar, I guess you can say on our deeper skin tones. I'm gonna start off with my Spectral palette. I'm actually holding this shade right here because the palette uh, is not glued in properly. It falls out if I hold it vertically. So that's what that was about. Now again, I like to have my looks be somewhat grounded even when they're on the more pastel side. So in, in addition to tight lining, I'm just going to start with one eye. I think I'm gonna do two different looks, one on each eye. I'm going to take this shade Occult, which is kind of a plummy, deeper aubergine kind of shade. And I'm going to take this brush, this is a Real Techniques uh, Rebel Edge Fine, and I'm just going to dip into this like such as, get some on my brush, and then I'm gonna kinda just scrub it along the outer two thirds of my lash line like a little toothbrush. This brush is so good if you have super curly eyelashes like I do, it's so good to just kind of sneak behind them, like you just kinda come in from the top and then push them down. Makes it so much easier for me to smudge color or even pencils. Like sometimes I'll drag it across a pencil and then scrub it in like that. Game changer. It's made my makeup life so much easier. I don't want to lay down too much because again, we do in pastel looks. Like the tight line, and this is by no means necessary. I'm just, I like to smoke. Even if I'm doing a pastel look, I want the smoke. And I'm really trying to get that worked in down toward my lash line and then just kind of feather it up a bit. You know, blending. That would be known as blending. If this were a true smoky eye, I would do the same on the outer two thirds of my lower lash line, but we're not doing that on today. Now then, for this pastel look, I think I'm going to work with these three shades. This is Eerie, Phantom, and Unknown. So let's see what I come up with here. I mean, I could easily just do, again, a one shadow look, take Eerie, which is a lavender shade, put that all over the lid, blend it out, Bob's your uncle. But why show something that I described just that easily, right? So what I will do is I will take Eerie, and I think I'm going to put that on the inner 
half of my lid. Let's start there. Let's see what I come up with here. So I have it on a blender brush. This is a Morphe G24. Listen, live and learn y'all. This actually was a great brush line. I think this was their gunmetal line or something, but I believe they discontinued it because for it to be good, it probably cost them too much money to make it. And we know that's not what Morphe's about. So I'm just laying that down, basically punching it in on the tip of my blending brush and then taking that brush and feathering it up into my crease. I'm dragging it out. I'm just freestyling here, you guys. So we're gonna see where this goes. And now I'm going to dip into that turquoise shade, Phantom. Same brush and uh, same thing. I'm gonna punch that in on my eyelid from the center, working my way out. All right, so we basically have our colors laid down. We wanna blend that line between them a bit. And I think what I wanna do is actually drag this uh, Phantom shade, the turquoise, a bit toward my inner and then take the, the lavender shade above the phantom shade on the outer. So I'm just gonna do that. And to kind of blend that line between the turquoise and the lavender, I'm basically gonna just take my brush and stab myself in the eye right on the line and that will blend the shadows. For my lower lash line, I think I want to go in with Eerie and that shade Unknown, the pink. So I'm gonna take Eerie on the outer and then I'm gonna do Unknown on the inner. Now I have small eyes, so I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. I'm just gonna get this outer V portion as people like to call it before I actually move toward my actual under eye area, just to finish up my shape on the outside. Switching to a smaller brush, this is a Linda Halabir 303. I'm gonna go in with Unknown, which is the pink. And I wanna take this most of the way across. I think I'm gonna to transition to the lavender shade once I'm right at the outer edge of my pupil. Going in now with Eerie, just to tie that lash line together. And because this brush is denser than the blending brush that I was using before, I'm actually gonna carry this up. So with this denser brush, I can kind of intensify that purple on my outer V here. Same brush, I'm going back in with Phantom, the turquoise, and I'm going to intensify this area, just so we can really see this rather unusual shape I've created. But didn't Kelsey and them tell y'all that I was a kook? Sorry if y'all didn't know. That is pretty much it for this eye. I'm gonna go ahead and do my waterline. I hadn't decided if I wanted to have anything on my waterline or not. I do. So I'm gonna do my waterline and we will leave lashes until after I do this eye and then I'll do all my lashes at once. Okay, I went ahead and did my waterline because I felt like I needed that lower waterline grounded. Some pastel looks I do, some I don't. This one I feel like I did. Again, completely not required, this is not a tutorial. So let's move on to this eye. For the other eye, I'm going to play around with the other palette I showed you guys, my Sugar Pill, what is this, Fun Size? Yeah, Fun Size. Okay, just wiping my brush off with a paper towel before I dig into this Fun Size. And I'm gonna start off with Rage Quit, this pink shade here, it's a deeper pink than Level Up. And that is going to be my outer crease shade. Starting off, we're just gonna stamp this down lightly so that we don't lay down a bunch of color in one place and then we can't move it. And as you can see, even though it looks like it might not work on deeper skin in the pan, I'm really, I love this little palette. I picked it up around when it first came out and I was like, this is the Black Girls Pastels palette. Like, this is it. On this eye, I didn't bother grounding the look with anything dark on my upper lash line. I don't think I need to. I mean, I don't do it every single look. It's just something I do depending on where I think I wanna go. Next, I'm gonna dip into player one, which is that lavender shade. And I'm just going to go basically inside of that negative space that I've created with the pink with Rage Quit. Dab, dab, dab. Taking that smaller brush, my Linda 303, I'm going to dip into high score, this kind of uh, sherberty orange color. And I'm going to take this on the inner portion of my eyelid. I wanted a smaller brush because a hoe needs some precision or a jojoba as it were. Just building this color up because this one 
does apply more sheerly at first, at least on my brown skin. Still working with high score. I'm taking it toward my inner tear duct, but not all the way down. I'm leaving this area right here open because I'm going to use another color there. I'm holding my palette at this awkward angle because the little holographic embellishments about around each pan make it hard to kind of see the colors, especially since I shoot with daylight and that kind of washes them out. But I'm going in with Twitch, this shade right here. And this is the color that I'm going to take in that lower tear duct area, like such. And actually, I want to kind of drag that in a bit on my lash line here, kind of underneath high score at the bottom there. and also get it all over my eyelashes in the process because that is a great look. For the bottom, I'm going to take Cheat Code Sugar Pills Turquoise, Pastel Turquoise, and I'm taking this on my lower lash line on the bottom. And as you may or may not have noticed, I do like to drag my eyeshadow pretty low on the bottom. It's just how I like it. Taking Cheat Code basically right to about the middle of my pupil, maybe a bit farther. And then I'm just gonna go back in with player one, that lavender to kind of tie everything in with the top. So the lower lash line connects nicely, even though it has some different colors or a different color. And I'm actually just flicking that out a bit so it kind of scoops around that um, rage quit pink that we have in the outer V and my crease. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna throw on my lashes, some bottom lash mascara, and we will cut back to future tea. And there you have it. That is the finished look, complete with awkward slow-mo so you can really get up and do. As far as the lashes I'm wearing, these are actually a three quarter length strip lash because whenever I'm wearing a bold pastel look or really just any colorful look, I like to lean into the fact that I look like a lunatic. I like to own it. And I like the look to be the focus of attention. I don't wanna wear a big lash that'll overwhelm it. But if you're not super chuffed with how your eye makeup turned out, a gigantic drag queen lash is a great way to go. A big lash can hide a lot of sins. I know I'm not an MUA and I'm damn sure not a guru, but hopefully this video gave you some tips and ideas to maybe get you inspired to dibble dabble in some pastels. And just in color in general. I mean, we all love a good brown eyeshadow, who doesn't? But a lot of us are still locked up in isolation anyway, so now's a great time to experiment, play with color, and get out of your comfort zone. I want to thank all of my talented, kind, creative, and beautiful collaborators for this because this was a lot Lot of fun. I was a little nervous about taking on pastels and then I was just like, wait a minute, I actually wear pastels a lot. And a special thank you to the notorious KBJ for even reaching out to me in the first place to do this collab because I was just like, me? Y'all want me? I'm gonna get up out of here, but make sure you guys check the description box, not just for links to the stuff that I put on my face, but for links to my fellow collaborators' videos as well. Thank you again for hanging out with me, especially if you stuck with me all the way to this point, the end. If you're new here and you found me through one of my collaborators' links, welcome to the Nat Fam. Oh, and it's just occurring to me now that I forgot to include the most important tip earlier in the video. And that is, even though I used a Morphe brush, never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. <laughs>